Kyle Chin here. We're going to be talking about the toe side pre drift today. Um, when you're skating downhill, toe side corners tend to be uh, one of the most challenging things to do. Uh, they're pretty scary, so we're going to talk about how to take them safely and uh, stay in control. Are you crazy? <laughs> when you're working on toe side pre drifts, it's easier to learn them if you go into a corner rather than practicing them on a straightaway. Uh, the corner will give you something to sort of aim at and um, it'll give you a chance to practice your lines when you're going through which is really important when you're riding downhill. You don't want to take a bad line and end up on the other side of the street. And on that note, you want to practice, if possible, on a one-way street or at least a corner where you can scout the, the exit of the turn. Maybe have like a buddy looking at the exit for you just to make sure that there's not a car coming uh, to hit you on the way over. Um, so this is a really good example of where to practice. This is just a closed off driveway and it's a really nice isolated toe side corner for me. Um, so this is where we're going to practice. When you're entering the turn you want to come in on the outside, out, outside edge of the street, uh, scrub off your speed on the outside and then cut in to the apex of the turn and then you'll exit towards the outside of the lane again. So you want to come in outside, cut inside, and then exit outside again. If you cut in too far inside, you're not going to be able to stick the line, and um, you're going to wash out to the outside, and you're not going to maintain your traction. Okay, so I'm going to talk about your stance when you're going into the toe side pre-drift. Um, you're going to be coming out of a tuck, so you know, what you want to do to prep yourself for the pre-drift is to scoot your back foot over onto the edge of the rail a little bit. So, um, you know, feel around with the, the sole of your shoe and you'll eventually sort of like feel where that uh, the sharp edge is. You want to have your toes kind of hanging over that edge a little bit. Uh, that will give you really good sideward leverage so that you can actually kick the board out rather than just trying to carve into it hard. You want to be able to kick the board out. Um, your front foot doesn't have to do a lot of repositioning. You just want to make sure that, uh, you know, it's not too far over like you would have it for a heel side pre drift. You want it to sort of, sort of be in the middle, have a little bit of weight on the toe side edge, but mostly just centered. Most of the action comes uh, from your back foot. So you're going to dig your feet over that edge, then you're gonna, gonna gra grab your rail. Uh, most people grab in front of their front foot. Some people like to grab in back, um, but unless you have like three foot long arms, that's kind of tough and you'll end up ripping your uh, downhill wheels off the ground. So it's usually easier if you grab in front of your front foot and then, you know, with your foot over the edge, your back foot over the edge a bit, then you can really get down low while you're holding the board, get your puck down on the ground, and that's sort of your position when you're entering the turn. And uh, that's going to be the starting point for kicking it out into the drift. So most of the time for toe side pre-drifts, you're going to think of it as kicking the back out, and it's almost like the board is pivoting around your front truck. Uh, and that means that most of the action, again, is being done with your back foot. So you're going to enter the turn going with your tuck like this, and then you're going to grab in front of your foot. Um, grabbing the rail just really kind of gives you like a solid feeling in the front of your board. So when you grab, get your hand down, what you're going to do is kick out with your back foot. And you'll notice that I'm not falling back into the hill like this. I don't want to get way off my board because the further off your board you go, the less traction you've got and the less control you have over the drift. You're just going to drift out completely. So you want to stay fairly on top of your board, have a lot of weight over your front foot, just kick out that back. Um, and this will sort of allow you to use your back foot like kind of like a rudder and determine how far out you want to hold it, how long you want the wheels to be drifting. And then basically that's the initiation of the slide. And then when you want to hook back up and shoot for the apex, you want to continue pushing forward with your front foot and then just release that pressure on the back foot. So what that'll, what that'll cause you to do is have the back of the board start to swing back under you while this uh, front of the board continues to just sort of move in that line of motion. And then the board's gonna be back under you again. You can keep your hand down here for a little bit of stability as you uh, regain your traction. And then you know, you'll enter the turn and gradually just ride through it. And you can lift your hand back up and uh, exit the turn in your normal tuck. So the most common problem in uh, toe side pre is that the rider wants to avoid high siding, which is a good thing, 
but uh, generally what people do is get way too far off their boards um, and their, their body will just be like a couple feet off the, off the center of the board and what will happen is that they'll feel really safe because you know they know that if they catch up their wheels they're not going to get thrown over backwards but being so far off your board is going to compromise your control because you're not going to have enough weight over your wheels you're not going to be able to hook back up and take the line that you want you're just going to wash out on the turn so what you need to do is practice staying on top of your board but to avoid high siding you just want to keep your weight over your toes you know and you don't want to basically you want to keep the weight over the the up the uphill wheels uh, on your toe side rail uh, and you don't you want to avoid putting a lot of excess weight on the downhill wheels because that's what will end up uh, pitching you off your board. Another common problem is that you put too much weight on your back foot when you're entering the turn and uh, because you have so much pressure on your back wheels it's harder to kick them out into the drift. So you always have to remember to put most of your weight on your front foot or your front truck. You should have something like 80% of your weight over your front foot over the front of the board and only like 20 over the back because that's really just doing all your sort of uh, speed control. It's just kicking in and out. So most of your weight is going to be over your front foot. Okay. Another critical thing to remember whenever you're doing any kind of slide is always to look where you want to go. And uh, this includes with your face, your eyes, and also in the way that you uh, point your shoulders. So when you're going into any kind of slide, like a check slide, for example, like a backside check slide, you want to keep your shoulders in line with the fall line of the hill while your lower body is sort of doing the sliding motion. And the same thing applies here when you're doing a toe side pre-drift. Um, basically, you want to keep on looking uh, with your eyes and your face. You want to look through the turn. You want to look through and, and watch the line that you want to uh, take. You want to watch the apex and you want to watch the exit line that you're going to eventually go through. Um, and that also means that you want to keep your shoulders cocked, uh, sort of pointed down the hill, so it sort of winds your body up uh, to recover easier. So most of the uh, actual sliding action is done with your lower body. This is what kicks out the board sideways. And then having your body turned like this, having your shoulders in line with the with the hill, and looking through where you want to where you want to follow through, uh, will allow you to just suck that board back under you and uh, follow through smoothly. Uh, so you don't want to end up looking over your back shoulder because what that'll do is just turn your upper body into the hill, and you'll lose control. You uh, you'll lose sight of where you want to go, and you'll just end up sliding backwards or doing like a 180. So those are things to avoid. Go for a big dog. Okay, so like I said earlier, um, toe side pre drifts are a little bit easier to practice into corners because uh, you don't have to be quite as precise as um, you know in bringing them back straight completely. Uh, but once you get that basic technique down, you can actually take those um, into straightaways too and just use them as a method of speed control. Just use it as like a little hands down check, speed check, um, instead of like a pre drift into a corner. So basically, the same rules apply. You just want to always uh, look where you want to go and in this case it'll mean you're looking downhill you'll just keep looking down the fall line of the hill and you'll just kick it out and then you want to bring it back all the way back so instead of like going through a corner where you can just sort of bring it back and um, continue moving in like a curve you want to bring it all the way back so that you're moving straight and just recover and go straight down the hill but you can just use this just like you would like a little Coleman or a heel side check um, but you can use a toe side so you can uh, even out some of the wear on your wheels and practice. So it's good, good stuff. <laughs> <laughs>